So to continue on the sentiment of yesterday's video, the sentiment of taking a bit of time to address some positive elements represented in the industry right now, I want to cover the highly anticipated Cyberpunk 2077. Cyberpunk 2077 is being developed by CD Projekt Red, which, for those that are not aware, is highly regarded as one of the most reputable, dedicated, and consumer-friendly companies in the entire AAA gaming space. I have a bit of history with the Cyberpunk game. When myself and my team attended E3 2018, I was invited to sit in on the media showcase which gave a world's first look at about an hour's worth of gameplay. I did not do extensive coverage at that time, seeing as no recording was allowed, and it was more just a glimpse to get the ball rolling from a PR standpoint, and less about providing content for creators to make videos with, or anything like that. Well, jump forward to now, and there is enough information, enough gameplay, and enough news to create a video discussing why Cyberpunk 2077 is shaping up to be one of the most anticipated games of 2019, possibly 2020, and potentially of all time. One of the core problems in the modern gaming industry is lack of clarity. For instance, even now as I prepare to livestream Anthem this very day on its release with Origin Premiere and EA Access and whatever other convoluted stuff, it is unknown exactly how they will monetize their cosmetics. A screenshot was leaked. The developers attempted to deflect the resulting criticism after players saw speculative $20 skins in a $60 game, and even after repeated and persistent questions by many fans, gamers, and creators about what the monetization model would actually look like, they refused to answer and outright refrained from offering any clarity whatsoever. Lack of information leads to speculation, and in a time when the industry is rife with predatory and negative practices, that speculation can often turn dark in nature. Well, CD Projekt Red does not allow this to happen. When confronted by concerns, the company wastes no time at all setting skeptics at ease. The original proof of this came when there was an emerging concern that Cyberpunk 2077 would adopt a games-as-a-service model, which is basically the scum of the universe right now. In response, CD Projekt Red quickly tweeted out that all concerns should be laid to rest. When thinking Cyberpunk 2077, think nothing less than The Witcher 3. Also going on to say that they leave the greed to others, which helped bank some goodwill as the industry's typical monetization devolves ever further into the land of predation. Another core and fundamentally positive sign is the fact that CD Projekt Red is independent. When discussing the seemingly never-ending chain of fuck-ups the industry has endured lately, a large chunk of the blame percolates upwards to land on the shoulders of the overarching publisher. The likes of EA, Take-Two, Activision Blizzard, and Bethesda have been notably front and center during 2018 and 2019 already due to their increasingly brazen attitude and seemingly outright disdain for their consumer base. CD Projekt Red does not answer to any of them, or, for that matter, to anyone but themselves. The development company is free to create their own timeline, to finish a product and launch it at their own whim. They are not as shackled by traditional shareholder and developer relationships, and as a result, have even been able to produce content that feels somewhat archaic, but not in a negative way. Instead, it is archaic in the sense that it lacks particular New Age anti-consumer behaviors, and is then subsequently appreciated that much more more by their core fan base. More recently, concerns have arisen regarding the new competition between Steam and the Epic Games launcher. The Epic Store has been approaching this competitive landscape in, for lack of a better word, an outright annoying way. Their tactic has been to poach exclusives, to corral consumers into usage of their platform through forced exclusivity deals. Most notably, they were able to reel in a timed deal with Metro Exodus, which flipped the game from a Steam offering to an exclusive Epic title within weeks of its final release. Not only was this annoying for consumers, but it greatly damaged Metro Exodus' sales as well. So it is no doubt that many companies will look at this as a case study for what could go wrong when dealing behind closed doors with the Epic launcher. CD Projekt Red wasted no time in clarifying when a user inquired on Twitter, though in an offhanded manner admittedly, that they are not considering an Epic Store exclusive deal, and though it remains to be seen which PC platforms the game does launch on, it seems very clear that the developers are leaning into their reputation of having consumer best interests at heart. And why wouldn't they? At this stage, the positivity surrounding their game and their brand as a whole is so immense, making a greedy decision would be far more damaging than it could ever compensate for.
Cyberpunk 2077 also appears to be catering to a mature audience. This is something that has again been shifting away from the mainstream industry spotlight because children are a massive demographic and so many games now just want to capitalize on younger fans to rake in the easy, low maintenance, casual dollars. Cyberpunk 2077 is the exact opposite. Within minutes at E3 during the reveal showcase, it was clear just how mature the game is. Nudity, graphic violence, you name it. But as these development considerations became so obvious, it also, at least personally, made me very, very supportive of the game, and I found myself respecting them even more because of it. Enough catering to children. Enough of it. Games made for children are boring. They are shallow, and they, frankly, suck ass. The market is now clamoring for games with depth. Games that do not shy away from mature content and break the mold that has become oh so common of just taking cartoon graphics and jacking up the hue saturation slider. Cyberpunk 2077 delivers on that craving already, even though it's not even out yet, it's pretty damn obvious it's going to. To be fair, it maintains a sort of stylized artistic approach and it does not attempt hyper realism, but it does not devolve to the level of janky Nickelodeon graphics so that preteen players will jack up the player base numbers. CD Projekt Red has been building towards Cyberpunk 2077 for quite some time, not only with traditional marketing methods, but with detailed and nuanced easter eggs like the secret screen at the E3 2018 reveal. The secret snapshot made it clear that the game would not have microtransactions at all, poking fun at the contemporary practice now of having them in almost all major single-player games, which is absurd. And this type of self-aware and counter-industry stance is winning them more favor than any other developer on the planet. The universe of cyberpunk is also immense, the history is rich, and this is not a game conceptualized for the AAA space at a breakneck pace simply to capitalize on trends. The world of cyberpunk has its roots in pen and paper role-playing, and I can't help but draw parallels to the film industry, or TV shows, where it often feels like shows or movies developed exclusively for that medium often end up falling behind and finish second when compared to the films or the other stories that draw inspiration and influence from a book or a written series. The best comparison for Cyberpunk 2077 is the Witcher series. The fantasy elements differ completely, the perspectives used, the universe, it's all different, but the Witcher series is based on written short stories developed by CD Projekt Red, also ignored current industry trends and sold some of the best DLC in gaming history. Setting aside personal preference, Blood and Wine was objectively one of the best offerings any company has ever made when it comes to further content developed post-release. That DLC alone could have competed for Game of the Year, by the way. Perhaps not a frontrunner, but it was definitely there. Using the Witcher series as a barometer for how Cyberpunk 2077 will be treated builds up nothing but confidence. So in terms of a comparison and a new potential product, there is no better relationship. We have everything that we need to understand that Cyberpunk 2077 is ripe with potential. Cyberpunk also has nothing to gain and everything to lose by succumbing to the filth that is standard AAA practices. CD Projekt Red knows this, and they are embracing it. They are taking the time needed to ship a finished product, and anytime a new indicator emerges regarding a practice that gamers like or dislike or what have you, they are lightning quick to make sure that it's clear where they stand and ease all doubt. The rich lore of the cyberpunk universe with its mega corporations, cybernetic enhancements, extensive RPG system, and other surrounding atmospheric elements give it more potential than almost any other game in recent memory. Combine that with the freedom to operate independently from a disconnected, ignorant, and predatory publishing entity, and you have the perfect recipe for a game that has so far given every conceivable confirmation that it's on an amazing path. CD Projekt Red also has a notable history of diplomatic relationships with YouTube creators and streamers. When a self-proclaimed games journalist took it upon himself to leak the audio from their E3 reveal before they were ready for it, which there wasn't an NDA, so technically he didn't do anything illegal, but man, it was super scummy. The company did take the video down as soon as they became aware, but further developments eventually revealed that even in the face of the internet demonizing and ridiculing this games journalist for his dishonor honest maneuver, CD Projekt Red had worked with him behind the scenes to try and remedy the damage done, and he, he being a journalist from Sifted Games, even admitted that the CDPR team had been the most amazing people to deal with. 
In an industry where false copyright strikes, forceful takedowns, and other systemic abuse of the intrinsic YouTube protection framework seems to run rampant without recourse, a company that is not only developing one of the most anticipated titles in years, but also takes the time to maintain and foster community goodwill on every single level, even in the face of leaked information and violated expectations, a company like that must be recognized as having consumer and gamer best interests at heart. A company like that, until heartily proven otherwise, has my absolute unflinching support. We know for a fact that Cyberpunk 2077 will not have microtransactions. We know it will not be an Epic Store exclusive. We know that the proper time is being taken to release it in a finished condition, and it will ignore the games as a service or we will fix it later model that is oh so common nowadays. We know that the game is based on extensive written lore, with a universe that contains nearly limitless potential. And lastly, we also know that it is in the hands of a development company that fought for years to maintain their independence culminating in one of the best open world fantasy games of all time, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which was based on a similarly fleshed out universe. While certain aspects of the games industry remain bleak, there are certainly things to keep an eye on and be excited about. Cyberpunk 2077 from CD Projekt Red, that is absolutely one of those things. That's it for today though. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. We have esports merchandise, various different communities, and some other stuff too, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. The idea now is to interlace a bit of positive while still highlighting problematic areas within the industry, and that is mostly based on community feedback. But yeah, that's it. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.